Everybody, it's your old pal Mike. I hope you're happy, healthy, and safe. And friends, I could not be more excited because today's video sees me embarking upon a journey that I have wished to take for many, many years. And that is the beginning of a series wherein I review and demo every currently available model of offset guitar. It's gonna take a long time though, so uh, you know, don't expect anything more than sporadic episodes, but I am really excited because I love offset guitars, you know this, and if you followed me for any appreciable length of time on the internet, you know I care about these things so deeply. I view them as underdogs, and being one myself, I relate to them heavily. So I am so happy to bring you this inaugural episode. But before we dive into it, I'd like to run through a few points first, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Sound good? Let's get into it. To start off, a word on why. Why would I be doing this to myself? Why would I be undertaking such a mammoth task? Well, friends, I have spent the better part of a decade both advocating for and educating on the subject of offset guitars. Simply put, I think they are Leo Fender's most brilliant yet misunderstood guitar designs, and I have taken it upon myself to arm players with the information they need to get the most out of their guitars every time. And if you are new to the world of offset guitars, then I want you to feel comfortable messing with all these switches and seeing string length behind the bridge. Like, there's so much different about these guitars from a Strat or a Telecaster or a Les Paul, more familiar and straightforward designs that I think really the goal of education is a noble one, and that's one that I'm, I'm happy to provide. And if you weren't aware, I used to own a guitar shop in Seattle called Mike and Mike's Guitar Bar, and from a very early phase of the shop, we decided to specialize in the things about which we were passionate, the guitars that we thought deserved a little more love. As a result of that and being the tech, I have played and worked on a sizable cross-section of the Fender catalog from every year of production. And last time I tried to estimate, it was somewhere between 1,200 and 1,500 unique instruments. Now that means I have had multiple examples from every year of production in my hands, and I think that that uniquely qualifies me to give an informed opinion about what models are great and what models may need tweaks down the line, these kinds of things. And so I would like to share that experience and knowledge with you in a way that helps you figure out what model might work best for your needs. So as we delve deeper and deeper into the available catalog, let's all keep that in mind, and I will do my best to let that experience inform me, but not keep me in a box. I'm going to be very real and honest with you about what I feel about all of these guitars. And I will do my best to not simply make it a comparison between old models and new models. I don't think that vintage is necessarily the best or perfect option every time, and there are plenty of good new guitars out there. Now, a word on the demos and reviews themselves. 
These are going to be entirely subjective, and the way I use these guitars may not be the way that you use them. That's perfectly fine, and I think it's the right way for me to go, because when I think about it, nobody really approaches the guitar in a purely objective manner. When we pick up a guitar off the wall, we come at the guitar with our own experience, our own biases, our own preferences. These things are not kept inside a vacuum, and even external forces can determine how we're going to feel about a certain guitar on a given day. This is a fact that was proved to me by taking part in something called the Coffee Sensorium uh, at Rose Park Roasters here in Long Beach, where my wife works. On a given evening, we were invited over to the roastery and we were given a number of tasks to perform while tasting coffee, one of which was holding a piece of 80 grit sandpaper, and you would be shocked by how big an impact the simple act of holding sandpaper had on how I perceived the taste of the coffee. The flavor was completely different. When I took a sip on my own, tasted fine. Holding a piece of 80 grit sandpaper and rubbing it in my fingers and tasting that exact same cup it was bitter and disgusting. At any moment, we might be affected by something happening outside of our bodies and minds. And so I think eliminating every single variable may be a fool's errand, but I'm going to approach these subjectively, however, warmly and honestly. And I think we can all live with that. Another point I wanna make is that this series is going to depend almost entirely upon customer instruments. As much as I would like to go shopping every single day of the week, buy a new guitar, take it off the wall, bring it back, review it, tear it apart, all of that, uh, there is no way <laughs> that I can sustain that on the amount of money that I make, which is so, so small. And I'm sure I could work some connections at Fender and say, hey, send me this, I wanna review and demo it, but I feel like they are not going to go for that, especially when we get to a few models uh, for which I will have some very strong words about, uh, as I have in the past. There are a few models that I have um, not enjoyed and been very vocal about my lack of enjoyment, and uh, things were a little tense there. So um, I'm going to try my best to not be beholden to a company or to a brand or any of that. I want to be open and honest with you, my audience. So as some of these guitars belong to other people, they may present with modifications and adjustments to set up that make them work best for the player in question. And that's okay because again, we don't approach guitars in a vacuum and a lot of us are prone to making changes anyway. So I don't feel that it's necessary to do the rude thing and reverse modifications in service of some semblance of performative scientific detachment. I, I just don't think that's the road to go down. So as long as we all keep these things in mind, I think we're gonna get along just fine and I think we're gonna learn things as well. Without further ado, let's get into it with the Squire Classic Vibe Jazzmaster. Given my love of vintage guitars, some of you might be surprised to learn that the Classic Vibe as well as the previous Vintage Modified series are among my most recommended guitar models. And the reason for that is because the ratio of value to quality is so good on these models. And to my mind, the Indonesian made Classic Vibe series is proof that you don't have to spend an arm and a leg to get a quality guitar that feels pretty good out of the box, provided that you give it a little bit of a setup, uh, but also sounds pretty damn good, especially for the price. And yes, I love my vintage guitars. Please don't get me wrong on that. But 
If you're a first timer to the offset world or you don't want to worry about the guitar you're taking to jams, the Classic Vibe is absolutely the first place that you should start looking. The Classic Vibe Jazzmaster features a poplar body finish in a gloss polyester finish, this one in Olympic white. It also features a maple neck with a laurel fretboard and 21 frets, and the neck shape itself, while not thick, is also not too thin and stays comfortable all the way up. The neck wears a bone nut, but we all know that's synthetic, right? The tuners are the same split shaft vintage style units that you'll see on all the other Squires and even some Fenders, and provided that you're stringing them correctly, there's no need to change them. They work great. Just for reference, that means you stick the string in the hole in the tuning shaft and then you wrap it around the post two to three times. That should be plenty. The pickups are Fender designed Alnico single coils and they sound pretty darn good, especially for the price of the guitar. And unlike some higher priced models, these pickups are actually Jazzmaster pickups. They're not P90s or Strat style coils hidden in an oversized bobbin. These are real deal Jazzmaster pickups that sound great out of the box. The electronics are fine, just fine really. This is an area where they're going to be able to save the most money. So you'll see some excess wire, you'll see mini pots. None of these things are inherently bad, but if dependability is an issue for you, you may want to upgrade as soon as you get the guitar, especially if you're gonna play it out. As for hardware, the new CV Mustang style bridge is actually pretty great. And out of the box, while the guitar needed to set up, the bridge felt pretty solid. These can sometimes shimmy down with string vibrations, so you might want to keep a bottle of Loctite on hand to freeze the height adjustment screws located in the bridge posts. The vibrato is workable, but realistically, you're not getting the full experience of an AVRI or vintage unit from these. It'll probably work just fine, but if you plan on using the vibrato for wild whammy bar thrills or detuning, any of those things, you may want to consider upgrading to an AVRI Fender, a Mastery, or a Descendant down the road. As a note, most of the affordable upgrades, say the Goto, the All Parts, the Golden Age, all of these vibratos are going to be a completely lateral move. You are basically paying for the exact same unit. So save your money, go American if you can. And now for my completely subjective personal opinion on the model. I love them. I recommend these all the time, especially as I said, for people who are diving into offset guitars for the first time. You do not have to spend a lot of money to get a great guitar. I cannot stress that enough. In reality, I find myself recommending the Squire Classic Vibe over many of the available Mexican models. And that's not to say that the Mexican models are of a lower quality. No, they're just fine. But many of them exhibit changes to the model that I think watered down the experience. You'll see modified vibrato positions. You'll see different bridges. You'll see decidedly non-Jazzmaster pickups. And if you want to figure out if one of these guitars will work for you. Simply put, if you want the full-on Jazzmaster experience, these are gonna give it to you without compromise. Now, while I've been a veritable font of praise throughout this review, I do wanna make a note that these guitars absolutely need a setup out of the box. This thing was really unworkable when I first pulled it out of its shipping container. There was no pitch back on the neck, the bridge was slammed right into the body, and no matter what I did or how lightly I plucked, the strings just jumped right out of their saddles because of a lack of neck pitch back. If you buy one of these, you or someone you know may need to set this up a little bit more in line with Leo Fender's original intent. Now that is with a pitched back neck via shims in the neck pocket, a raised bridge 
to increase downward force on it and keep the strings in place, as well as a set of strings that are ideally tens or above. Nines often don't cut it on these. You can get them to work with a little extra effort, but best practice, 10 to 46 or above. Now, as per my usual mode of operation, I set this guitar up correctly with the original bridge before I installed the mastery hardware. And that's just because I need a baseline, personally. I like to know what I'm working with, and so the best way to do that is to set it up correctly before making changes. And as soon as I pitched the neck back and raised the bridge, the string stayed in place, the thing played beautifully, it sounded great. Honestly, you can get these to work as is from the box. You just need to put in a little bit of effort. And while you're at it, it would also behoove you to dress the nut for the string gauge you intend to use. As previously mentioned, this guitar is wearing a mastery bridge and vibrato, and these are certainly changes that can alter the sound and playability of the guitar, for me in a positive way, but not for everybody. However, I don't think these changes are so drastic as to completely alter the sound of the guitar as you're going to hear it in the demos here. These pickups are still stock, the electronics are still as they came from the factory, you are still hearing the sound of the guitar. But truly, I cannot recommend enough Mastery and their wonderful, wonderful wares. And at $399 USD, these guitars are perfect platforms for modifications. If you're the kind that wants to experiment with different hardware types, different pickup configurations, different wiring schemes, these are perfect for you. And you don't have to fret about mucking up a pristine vintage or expensive guitar. So if mods are your bag, the Squire Classic Vibe is a great place to start. And if not, these guitars work great as stock. As mentioned, you're gonna need to set them up, but overall, I think these are solid buys for people who are on a budget or getting their first offset for the very first time. Now we come to the tricky bit, the rating. And while I could very easily say good or bad, I really don't think that those are useful metrics by which to judge a guitar, because even if I think something is bad, is it still a guitar? Does it still play? Does it still make noise? The answer is almost always yes. So here's my compromise. We're going to base this on a recommendation system. If I think something is very good, I'm going to recommend it. If I think something is great and truly great, I'm going to highly recommend it. If I think something is skippable, instead of saying it's terrible or bad, I'm just going to say I don't recommend it. That's simple enough, right? Like that's, that's me saying that I, I may not be the biggest fan of a model, but that doesn't mean that if you own the model, you should feel bad. That doesn't mean that I'm saying your guitar is terrible. And that also doesn't mean that you should completely avoid them. Maybe, just maybe, the thing I don't like is the thing that you're going to love. And I'm completely open to that and you should be too. So in future, if I don't recommend something, that just means I don't recommend it, nothing more. However, in the case of the classic vibe, I heartily endorse this model. I love these and I could not recommend them more. So there you have it. The Squire Classic Vibe, that's a big old thumbs up from your old pal, Mike. Thank you so much for joining me on this inaugural edition of Jazz Master Reviews. Um, I'll nail down the format a little bit more as we go, I'm sure, but I hope this gives you the information that you need to be armed with to make an informed decision. And if you've got a classic vibe, I would love to hear from you about it. Do you love your guitar? Do you hate your guitar? What is it about the classic vibe that drew you in initially? Please tell me your classic vibe story in the comments. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this review and demo of the Squire Classic Vibe. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And I appreciate you coming back to the channel again and again. Please stay tuned for more Jazzmaster and Jaguar reviews at a later date. They'll be sporadic, but, but we'll get to them, I promise. Take care of yourself and each other, and we'll see you in the next video.